I don't. In this video, we're going to talk about the application of the beginning of Form 12. For those of us who think about and like discuss application of forms, uh, Sangsu 12 is a really strange one, uh, especially at the beginning of it. So we have a few possible interpretations of it. I'm going to have one that I particularly like. Uh, so one's going to be a general idea, one's going to be a theoretical idea, and the third one is going to be a way for us to actually do this potentially in combat. Uh, but let's take a look at each of those. Just so we're on the same page, right, so the very beginning of it is a draw defense. Again, pause as little as you can at the defense, roll, stab the saw on the ground, and then come up. I'm going to move back so you can actually see the full thing. And from here we do a nice happy combination where we're whacking and slashing, etc. Right? So the beginning of it's really, really strange, right? So if you think about you know, what's going on, uh, the canonical view is like, okay, we draw, we do a downward thrust, and then we go into a guard, defense, block, however you want to interpret that. Uh, interpret that. We'll talk about ways to do that in the future. Um, that's the beginning, and that seems really strange. Right, so either we just draw and we just see some guy on the ground, it's like, okay, eh. Which just means like you just entered like an active battlefield and you're like, oh, there's an enemy, let me just finish them off and then move on to the next person. But this would really break the rhythm for the grand majority of forms. In fact, I think this would be the only one where you'd be dispatching or finishing off the foe of another peer, right? Uh, so like, so for all the other forms, it's like if there is a final dispatch, you were the one who initially attacked them, right? So this either breaks that rhythm, or there's something else going on that makes potentially a little more sense. Uh, but just so you know, like the canonical, as far as I know canonical, um, idea is, someone's on the ground, I stab them, I go into my, you know, in the ledge thing, a really, really short, short stance, and then I go into my striking. So let's talk about another way we can potentially think about this because I'm not actively enjoying the current way we think about it. So let's talk about that theoretical idea. Again, if you're a returning viewer, you probably know that I, I believe very, very, you know, heartily that all the Sangsu forms use a Sangsu gun, which is a really, really long sword. Again, think about body length sword uh, with normal or a little bit longer uh, hip length. So it's a really long sword. Um, and the reason I'm going to bring this up in particular with Form 12 is because in Form 12 in particular, uh, there's a lot of overlap in techniques that you see in older manuscripts of Korean martial arts and this form. Uh, and again, a form that specifically uses the Sangsu gun. And when I talk about, you know, references, uh, it's going to be this uh, happy gentleman over here. Um, so again, I don't know how copyright really works, I'm just going to show you the cover of it. Um, I highly recommend get your own copy just because it's super useful. Um, but if you take a look at how uh, the Sangsu gun was used, there's a lot of overlap in the weirder stances. Uh, or more particularly the guards that you wouldn't assume is standard for a longsword. For example, this one. Uh, again, you, like the idea of having like a blade upright like this, uh, it's a very Chinese uh, style thing. So if you ever see uh, the Zhang, for example, you have a very upright um, straight sword. Uh, but this is also in the uh, Korean manuscripts for the you know, Sangsu gun, as well as this one. This one in particular is really frustrating to think about because, at least for a standard longsword, this doesn't do that much that a, a, another guard would probably do better. Um, but uh, these are both things that you see in uh, the Sangsu gum, so let's take a look. Let's first take a look at the draw from the sides. You can kind of see maybe where I'm coming from. So from here, again, we draw, we spin into a downward thrust, and then we come up this way, and then from here, we pop up, and then one, two, three. So, Let's take a look at the very beginning again, right? So draw here. So this technique in particular is the problem, right? So again, either I'm finishing off someone's, you know, someone's foe uh, from an ally, for example. Um, but again, this is just very strange. Uh, and then we go into a guard. And then from there, we're going to engage. So let's actually talk about the Sangsu gum in particular. I'm going to use a bow staff just because it's the closest thing that I have to a Sangsu gum. 
Um, so let's assume there's a little bit of engraving here, so this is where I'm going to assume like the end of the hilt would be, for example. Uh, so it would be normally here. Now, obviously, uh, you wouldn't actually have a stanza gum in your belt like we, like we do for our long swords. Uh, what usually happened was it was actually here, hanging by like strings, etc. Uh, the scabbard was actually swinging this way. So, how would you normally draw the sword? Now you could try what we do with our normal sword and bring it up, draw forward, kind of get weird <laughs> because notice again it's a really long sword, you have to like throw the scabbard off and then go into a defense. Um, now if we did try to do that, just like in the very beginning of the form, that just doesn't make any sense, right? You would have to first of all pick up the, the swinging sword, you would need to throw the scabbard back as I go into a defense like so. That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, versus, how would, so if, if you had this swinging sword and you had to draw it and it goes excessively long, but you know you could throw back the scabbard if you needed to, uh, again, it was so attached, but it would give you some uh, extra leeway with the draw, how would you do it? Well, if you, again, the blade would be hanging down just because like the geometry of like weights and stuff like that. So from here, all it would do is draw out this way and then maybe go into technique. Hmm, right? So from here, so maybe instead of actually like doing a thrust, the first two moves that we use with the long sword replicate the idea of simply drawing the long sangsugum. So from here, we can draw out here, almost like we were stabbing, and then go straight into our like ready position here. And from there, notice I'm never going to use this to actually block something coming in because uh, anyone who has tried to apply this knows if I receive any any impact, it's going to like break my arm. So what's really going on here is throwing the scabbard back, draw up here, so now you're ready, and from there you're going to pop up to get that forward momentum for our cuts. So this is my uh, my justification for why we have a really strange draw, um, because again, a lot of the forms have, or a lot of uh, Sanctuary 12 specifically uses the Sangsu gun, or it has Sangsu gun inspired techniques. So this just makes a lot of sense, at least for me. But I can already hear like they're raging. So first of all, that's 100% not supported by the Federation. Um, I haven't discussed this with any of the masters. It's just something that I think of because it makes the most sense to me. But we discussed the canonical, again, which kind of breaks our rhythm of the forms. We discussed the theoretical, right, which is also good, so we can kind of understand why we do certain things. Let's talk about a way we can actually use this with our standard longsword, right? So if we're here, uh, again, it doesn't quite make sense for me to draw, <laughs> maybe stab you in the toe, and then go into the defense, and then bull rush you, right? So let's, just in case that did sound tempting, right? So if I was close enough, first of all, to stab your toe, you're right there. Why would I step fully forward and then fully forward again to do some techniques? It doesn't make as much sense. Uh, Versus, so one thing that you could be doing is going to be taking the idea that we do with a lot of other forms. Uh, so form one with a cross cut, form seven with a center cut, and a few others with like uppercuts and stuff like that. Clearing. So if you're here, uh, if you're my opponent and I and you suddenly see this coming forward, I'm thrusting towards you. Uh, you probably would either want to back off or deflect it. Uh, and in this case, actually either will be fine for us. Uh, but let's take option one. They just back off. Cool. I'm here. I throw it out. You, you back off. I close in the distance. And then from here, I can pop up and really charge you down with these cuts. Uh, this interpretation is the most in line with slightly more canonical Federation stuff. Uh, so if you do want to think of it that way, super cool. Uh, now, if you actually did make contact with that thrust, you could think about driving it down, but just know that just the geometry of like bodies and stuff like that, they wouldn't probably fall all the way down, at least least of all for you just to step over them and go for the rest of the techniques. Uh, but that is one path we can go. And another path we can go is actually going to be similar, not quite the same, because I'm going to use uh, an Eskrima technique. So we're here, again, roll, thrust. I'm expecting you to probably block it, or you could back off, but I'm expecting, like, if you saw a thrust coming this way, you would just be like, no, and now I'm gonna end you, right? 
Because this, again, whenever you're doing a form, expect that you're fighting someone your rank or below. I'm expecting most of us, if they see a thrust to the face, they block, right? So that's like, cool. So if I do that, I thrust to the face, they deflect it. What I can actually do, so it's gonna change the rhythm of the form. Let's take a look. I'm actually going to pop up, grab their bicep, or grab their wrist, grab whatever arm I can, and I'm gonna lift it up, cut underneath the armpit, cut across the body, and I'm gonna, again, the body's here, coming in, again, just getting my bearing with my sword, and if I need to, I can do the spin cross cut, hit that person, or just make sure they're down, and then blow out the cut forward. So I talked about this technique when we talked about uh, yet a one, for instance, uh, when we had the one, two, right? Because in the form, it was really strange. It was here, pop up, knee strike, one, two, three. Uh, versus if you think about one, two, and you can do cut, cut, cut. It makes a little bit more sense, at least in terms of you know, application. And if you are using a short sword, which I'm assuming Yeto is, it's a lot easier to block, cut, uh, block, grab, than block, receive all that impact on your wrist, throw it up, and then go for a knee strike, right? So it just makes more sense to one, two, knee, and then cut, cut, cut. So again, if you're a returning viewer, you know that I do use this technique occasionally. Uh, we can also use this technique laser, later, laser, later in Form 12, but that's at least how I'm justifying it. So as usual, um, again, almost all of these applications are going to be non-canonical, so obviously just take what I say with a grain of salt, especially this form because I take a lot of liberties with it because at its face it doesn't make as much sense, but if you understand like the, the potential history behind it using the Sangsugang, or again, uh, learning how to like think about the geometry of the fight, it does make a little bit more sense, but it's not as canonical with the Federation as we might like. Uh, but just keep all of that in mind, think about it, digest it, throw out things you don't like, potentially experiment with things that you do. Um, but I guess with that, make sure you stay safe, stay humble, keep training, and digest, understand, and all that stuff. I don't...